Newfoundland is a giant dog that hides a good-natured and affectionate character behind a harsh appearance. These dogs are happy to meet new people, love to communicate with other animals, and will never offend those who are weaker than them. The Origin Story of the Newfoundlands Newfoundlands, they are divers, do not have an unambiguous history of origin. There are three main versions according to which these dogs were bred. The first version refers to the Vikings who bred bear dogs. These were large animals that accompanied their owners on military campaigns. The second version is that divers descended from Tibetan Mastiffs. There is no evidence of this, but Mastiffs are the oldest breed of dogs, moreover, one of the largest. Divers are physiologically similar to these powerful dogs. The third version is that the Newfoundlands formed independently, like a breed. Dogs live near the seas and lakes, so their fur has evolved to become water repellent. The size of the breed was achieved by crossing with other large dog breeds such as Molossians, Mastiffs, and Sheepdogs. Interesting fact, the dog originates from the island of Newfoundland, after which it got its name. This island was visited by both Vikings and Greenlanders, so which of them first began to develop the breed is an open question. The pioneer of the breed is John Cabot, who arrived on the island in 1497. Over time, the open Canadian island served as the name for an unusual dog breed. George Cartwright was the first to call water dogs the Newfoundlands, paying tribute to the historical homeland of these dogs. It was from this time that the dogs began to bear this name, and before that they were simply called divers. Newfoundland, Breed Description Newfoundlands are huge massive dogs. They have a sturdy body that is both powerful and compact. They have well-developed muscles, due to which the movements are well-coordinated. The length of the body from withers to tail is strictly proportional to the height of the dog from withers to ground. Bitches are less massive than males. The back is straight, strong, with a pronounced withers and croup. The head of the Newfoundlands is large, with a wide skull. The vault of the skull is convex, which makes the profile of the dog expressive. Divers have a well-developed occipital part, the occipital protuberance is easily felt. The muzzle has a square shape, relatively deep and slightly shortened relative to the head. The coat on the muzzle is thin and short, there are no folds. The outlines of slightly drooping lips are clearly visible, but the mouth is tightly closed. The cheeks are soft, slightly drooping. The nose of the Newfoundlands is large, wide, with well-developed nostrils. In color, most often, black, but brown shades are allowed. The dog's bite is scissor or straight, snacks are not allowed. The teeth grow strictly at right angles to the jaw. The eyes of these dogs are small, set deep and slightly slanted, which makes the look sad. Set wide enough to each other. The eyelids do not droop, like in St. Bernard's, the red part of the eyes should not be visible. According to the color of the eyes, most often, brown or amber, according to color. The ears of Newfoundlands are small, triangular in shape, and slightly rounded at the ends. They are planted on the back of the skull, symmetrically to the cheekbones. Ears stretched forward easily reach the dog's eyes. The diver's neck is strong, smoothly merged with the shoulders, long enough for the head fit to be noble. Has a graceful curve. The dog's chest is round, the shoulders are slightly sloping, the musculature is well developed. The character and habits of the Newfoundlands. Despite their huge size, Newfoundlands are very affectionate, good-natured and open dogs who are ready to love all people around. This character was formed due to the fact that dogs were rescuers for a long time, they found people and pulled them out of the rubble of buildings or rescued drowning people. These dogs have an innate instinct to save drowning people. Divers are good watchmen, they understand what territory belongs to his family and are ready to protect it. Newfoundlands love to learn new things, so they are perfectly trainable. In addition, these dogs are playful, so they love to tinker with children. They will never give a child offense and will make sure that he does not get into trouble, so these dogs are also good nannies. However, children can harm these huge dogs. The bones of Newfoundlands are not as strong as they seem at first glance, therefore it is strictly forbidden to ride a dog, including in sleds. The backbone of the dogs is designed for comfortable swimming and not for the transportation of goods. Newfoundlands get along well with other animals. They do not offend small dogs and cats, they are careful with all the animals that are smaller in size. Some Newfoundlands are even afraid of very small hamsters and mice. Interesting fact, trained divers are well aware of their strength and their size, so they will not carry the owner during a walk, dragging the leash. These dogs are fearless, not afraid of loud sounds and strangers. In addition, divers are very curious dogs. Most of all they enjoy watching the actions of people, which makes them even better nannies for children. Newfoundlands have a lot of interest in new objects, so they always tend to smell and touch unfamiliar things. Interesting facts about Newfoundlands. Newfoundlands were often depicted on postage stamps, coins, postcards, advertising booklets, and urban graffiti in Canada. These popular dogs were minted in New Zealand. 
Landseers are black and white Newfoundlands, sometimes identified as a separate breed. They are named after the artist Edwin Landseer, who adored these dogs. Landseers do not differ from ordinary divers in anything, except for a specific color. Silver Grey Newfoundlands are recognized only by the Kennel Club of America as an independent breed, but other sinological associations classify them as ordinary divers. In the CIS countries, there is a prejudice against silver divers, which is why they are not even allowed to participate in exhibitions. Newfoundlands are very gentle, sensitive and empathic dogs. They know how to find people's pain points, are aware of this pain and try to help a person. For example, they may start licking a sore spot or try to warm it up. Some argue that it really helps. Therefore, Newfoundlands are sometimes recommended to give birth to people who suffer from diseases of the bones and joints of the legs. The coat of the Newfoundlands is soft and silky. It is great to knit everything from it, from mittens to sweaters. Things are very soft and waterproof. Newfoundlands are like humans in that they dream. They whine and scratch their paws more often than other dogs while sleeping and sometimes even wag their tail. Pros and cons of Newfoundlands The advantages of Newfoundlands include the following facts. They are intelligent dogs with flexible intelligence. In an emergency, they are able to make decisions on their own. For example, if a diver sees a drowning person, he will choose the strategy that will be most optimal for saving the drowning person. Newfoundlands are trainable. They are happy to learn new commands, they are interested in performing tricks. Newfoundlands love people. They are infinitely loyal to their masters and are ready to follow them everywhere. These dogs adore children and even realize their responsibility for them. They can be safely left next to the children, since the dog will never offend the child and will not leave him alone, these dogs realize that they are stronger than humans, so they will never harm them. Dogs of this breed are completely good-natured and affectionate, therefore they are very courteous in dealing with both people and other animals. Newfoundlands are fearless. They are not afraid of trains and cars, they are not afraid of harsh sounds. This makes them good watchmen. The disadvantages of Newfoundlands include continuous grooming of the coat. The thick long hair of divers requires regular brushing. Dogs of this size cannot be kept in an apartment. They will not be comfortable as they require a lot of space. These dogs cannot stand heat and can get heat struck. They have fragile skeletons, so you shouldn't overload the dogs, even if they are happy to carry your heavy things. Newfoundland Care Newfoundlands require good care. First of all, it is, of course, wool. Thick and light undercoat easily gets tangled in mats. The Newfoundland should be combed at least four times a week, and even better, every day. For the undercoat, use a long, thick toothbrush, preferably made from wood. The top coat and top coat can be brushed with a fine, short tooth comb and a natural bristle brush. This will keep your dog's coat shiny and healthy, and will not fall into lumps. Divers molt twice a year, so they will have to be combed out several times a day. Once a year, but not more often, the Newfoundland should be trimmed. It is better to entrust this business to professional groomers since it is easy to entangle the coat and get tangled in it yourself. Groomers remove layers of undercoat and cut the length of the guard hair. Newfoundland noticeably loses in size after such a procedure. It is especially important in the summer when dogs are suffering from heat. Interesting fact, Newfoundlands love to swim, but they cannot be washed with shampoo. Their skin is very sensitive to such substances. Plus, the shampoo washes away the water repellent oil this breed is famous for. If the dog is very dirty, it is better to use a special dry shampoo. Be sure to brush your teeth and cut off the claws if the dog is already clattering them on the floor. The eyes must be examined every day as these dogs are prone to eye diseases. Among other things, Newfoundlands love to walk. They need to walk for two to three hours a day and play active games so that the dog does not acquire obesity or diseases of the locomotor system. But the best activity for these dogs is swimming. Newfoundland, price and how to buy correctly. Before choosing a Newfoundland puppy, correctly assess your strength. This dog requires a lot of grooming and high maintenance costs. They need spacious enclosures and sometimes air conditioning so as not to overheat in the heat. These dogs should be walked frequently and, if possible, allowed to swim. Taking the first ad on the internet for a Newfoundland is a bad idea. Chances are good to get a mongrel or mongrel puppy. Even worse is getting a dog that has a number of medical conditions. Puppies with diseases of the eyes or musculoskeletal system are especially often sold. Taking a dog online is a huge risk. It is worth exploring nurseries that sell Newfoundlands. Pay attention to their pupils, adult dogs, which have already been taken away by their owners. They must be healthy and robust animals with no obvious signs of disease. It is best to communicate with the owners of the Newfoundlands, which were taken in the chosen nursery. When choosing a puppy, come to the kennel several times. Carefully study the history of vaccinations of puppies, the pedigree of their parents. 
Newfoundland puppies are fluffy, clean, nice-smelling lumps of fur. They play with each other and are happy to meet new people. Puppies that are shy or dirty can be sick in some way. Depending on the class and pedigree, the Newfoundland, on average, costs from 300 to 700 US dollars. The best dogs of a show or VIP class will cost around 2000 US dollars. Newfoundland is a large and kind dog, resembling a bear in appearance. They are endlessly loyal to their owners, love to play with children, and spend time with their family. Thanks to their sensitivity and intelligence, they will never give family members an offense and will also become good and quick-witted companions.